Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. This is a paper discussion video, so get ready with this paper, and let's go through the questions and answers together. In 1A, we have a diagram showing a growing chain of amino acids and the amino acid cysteine. The first question is, show the formation of a bond between them. To join two amino acids, the amide group of one and the carboxylic group of another one react. One must remove OH, another one removes hydrogen. Use circus to show this. Then, a peptide bond, which consists of C, O, and H, forms between the C and N of the two amino acids. The removed hydrogen and OH will then form H2O together. Number two, the covalent bond is a peptide bond. The reaction in the figure is the formation of a polypeptide. So, we are talking about translation here. It occurs in the ribosome. In B, we have a 3D structure of a protein. In the picture, you can see an alpha helix that looks like a coil spring, while the arrows indicate the presence of the beta pleated sheet. B1, describe the secondary structure of the protein. As I mentioned, you can see alpha helix and beta pleated sheets. Some regions have no fixed shape. 2. Explain why protein shown in figure 1.2 has a tertiary structure but not quaternary structure. Only proteins with more than one polypeptide have a quaternary structure. This protein is a single polypeptide. You should also use the definition of a tertiary structure to answer this question. There are interactions between our group of amino acids on the same polypeptide. A quaternary structure has interactions between the R groups of amino acids on different polypeptides. Since there is only one polypeptide, this cannot be the case. The presence of prostatic groups such as HEM group on hemoglobin is another reason a protein is said to have a quaternary structure. The protein in this picture has none. 3. Explain how the three-dimensional structure of the protein shown in figure 1.2 is held in place. There is one very important thing you need to see in the question. Cysteine is the only amino acid that can form disulfide bridges. Since this protein does not have it, please do not use disulfide bonds as an example when discussing the R-group interactions that contribute to the tertiary structure. The first three points are about the secondary structure, as it can affect the tertiary structure. The first and second points describe how alpha helix and beta pleated sheets form. There is a mark if you mention that the bonds in the secondary structure are the hydrogen bonds. Note that the third point is only given if you do not gain marks for the first two points. Marking point 4 to 6 are the more important points. Each R group interaction contributes to the tertiary structure, and the description of how they are formed will give you a mark. If you do not get any marks for point 4 to 6, naming these interactions or stating that they form between the R groups, will give you one mark. Question 2 shows a scanning electron micrograph of a macrophage. A1, describe how macrophages engulf bacteria. Since the question did not name the process, you get one mark by providing the name. It is phagocytosis or endocytosis. Then, write the steps. Firstly, antigens on bacteria bind to receptors on the cell surface membrane of macrophages. You can also get this mark by discussing how antibodies help the binding. Then, the cell surface membrane will infold or invaginate. Parts of the membrane will fuse. A phagosome is formed inside the cell. This process requires ATP or uses energy. 2. Explain the functions of lysosomes in cells such as macrophages. Lysosomes contain enzymes to break down or digest pathogens. They can also break down worn out, old, and non-functioning organelles or cell components. The enzymes they use are called the hydrolytic enzymes. You can also get this mark if you provide two named examples of the enzymes. A lysosome is membrane-bound to protect the rest of the cell from its hydrolytic enzymes. There is one AVP for this question. You can use any other extra functions or details to get this mark. For example, Lysosomes digest the pathogen, except its antigen, allowing antigen presentation. B shows you some statistics on TB in the USA. To calculate percentage change, use the formula final minus initial 
divided by initia times 100. So it is 10,000 minus 25,000 divided by 25,000 multiply 100. Since it decreases, you should have a negative sign in your answer. Forgetting the negative sign will cause you to lose a mark. This graph does not have a precise value. So they accept any answers between negative 60 to negative 68%. Two wants you to describe the trend shown in the graph. Firstly, give a generous statement to describe what it looks like. Then, separate the graph into distinct parts to describe them individually using the data. This graph can be separated into two parts, steep decrease and the level off. In 2015, there was a small increase. This can give you another mark. C. Suggest an advantage of calculating the number of new cases per 100,000. This is a commonly asked question. It is not valid if you compare the raw data between countries with different population sizes. This conversion takes into account the population size of a country and allows a better comparison. Any other logical suggestions will give you the AVP mark. For example, data like this can be used to estimate the number of vaccines or drugs that should be supplied to the country or to monitor and evaluate the success of TB control programs in that country. D. State two reasons why it is difficult to reduce the number of cases of TB across the world. The command word state means you only need to provide a straightforward statement. Detailed elaborations are not expected. When the question only asks for two reasons, the examiner will not mark extra answers. Only the first two are considered. Firstly, mycobacterium can remain dormant in the body. Sometimes, the patient has no symptoms, so they will not seek treatment at all. TB treatment takes a long time. The minimum is about six months. This causes a lot of patients to not complete the course. Many people do not have access to treatment, especially those living in poverty. Point 5 is a common issue with the pathogen. Antibiotic resistant strains of mycobacterium are very common now around the world. HIV AIDS and other medical conditions that weaken a person's immune system may increase their susceptibility to TB. Even though vaccines are available, vaccine reluctance reduces the number of people receiving them. TB is an airborne disease. The migration of people infected with TB or from countries with high rates of TB speeds up the spread of the disease. Malnutrition can cause a weakened immune system and lead to a higher chance of infections. Mycobacterium bovis is transmitted from infected animals to humans. The consumption of unpasteurized milk and contaminated cattle leads to its transmission. The lack of education on preventive measures can cause the disease to be transmitted more easily in a community. Overcrowded living conditions also cause the disease to be transmitted more rapidly. 3a explain how water moves up xylem vessels in the trunks of trees. Firstly, give a general statement to explain why water moves. It is because of the water potential gradient. Then, state that it moves as a continuous column in the xylem vessel. This continuous movement is due to the transpiration pool. After that, link the properties of water to this movement. It is due to the hydrogen bonds between the water molecules and the hydrogen bonds between water molecules and the cellular cell wall of xylem vessel. You can also use the term cohesion and adhesion but do not just state the term without any elaboration. B provides you with some information about a phenomenon known as cavitation. In short, it is when air filled spaces form in the xylem vessels, especially when there is a high rate of water movement in the xylem vessels. It can be detected due to a noise called click. There is a figure showing you how PAR and wind speed affect the rate of cavitation in a tree. You are asked to suggest conclusions based on the data. Before we answer this question, let me just emphasize this. Do not worry when a question asks you something you have never heard of. All you have to do is to conclude from the graph. It doesn't matter even if you do not understand cavitation after reading the passage. Let's look at the graph first. Wherever PAR peaks, cavitation peaks as well. We can conclude that cavitation occurs when light or PAR is available. This is when the trees photosynthesize. When light is available, 
stomata opens for gas exchange and cause a greater rate of transpiration, which in turn increases the rate of cavitation. However, the values do not show a clear relationship between PAR and cavitation rate. If you check the exact time when the peaks occur, they do not coincide. Now, let's check the wind speed graph. Even though the peaks seem to occur around the same time at the first glance, a closer look reveals that they do not coincide. Note that this point and the previous points are considered the same mark. You can use either for the mark, but you won't get two marks by mentioning both. Next, there is no cavitation when the wind speed is below 1.25 meter per second. Lastly, when you compare the two factors, PAR affects cavitation rate more than wind speed, as the graphs look more similar. Figure 4.1 shows some cells in various stages of the cell cycle. A1 named the stage of mitosis in cells A and B. In A, the chromosomes are all aligned at the equator of the spindle. So, this is metaphase. B shows two separate groups of them, but they have not reached the opposite poles. So, this is anaphase. 2. Describe the role of microtubules in mitosis. They form spindle fibers during mitosis. These spindles are attached to the central mere or kinetochore. Then, they move chromosomes to the spindle equator during metaphase. Shortening of microtubules occurs at anaphase. This causes central mirrors to divide and sees the chromatids to move to the opposite poles. As a result, daughter nuclei receive one chromatid at each chromosome. There is one AVP. For example, the spindle fibers lengthen to extend the cell during cytokinesis. 3. State what happens in cell C, shown in figure 4.1, until two new cells are formed. In C, you can see that telophase has already started. So in your answer, you must include what happens in telophase until cytokinesis is done. Firstly, the nuclear envelope reforms around each group of chromosomes. Then, chromosomes uncoil or decondense to chromatin. The nucleus reforms and become visible. For these points, pay attention to the verbs you use. You will lose mark if you use inappropriate verbs. Then, the organelles are distributed between two halves of the cell. Cytokinesis will follow. Since this is an animal cell, cytokinesis occurs by cleavage furrow. For this point, any correct description of the process is acceptable. Extra details such as the role of contractile ring during cytokinesis is credited as AVP. B. Identify and explain two events that occur during the cell cycle that leads to daughter cells being genetically identical. Since the question has asked you to provide two events, you don't have to give an extra answer. It will not be marked. The first one is the semi-conservative replication of DNA. Each new chromatid is identical to the old one, causing the sister chromatid to be identical. It also means that each chromosome has two identical DNA molecules. The second event is the alignment of chromosomes on the spindle equator or the metaphase plate. This leads to the separation of chromatids occurring in a way that each cell receives an identical chromatids of each chromosome. The third one is the duplication of the centromere. This is due to the shortening of spindle fibers. It allows the sister chromatids of each chromosome to move to the opposite poles. Checkpoints within the cell cycle play a part too. They prevent cells with DNA arrows from entering the next stage. The last event is the proofreading ability of DNA polymerase. This enzyme repairs arrow in DNA replication. Mutations in daughter cells are avoided so they can be identical. Question 5 is about a cell signaling compound that stimulates the production of endothelial cells in the formation of capillaries. A1 explain how it is possible for many different cell types to respond to the same cell signaling compound. Any cell that has the specific receptor for a cell signaling compound can respond to it. The receptor can be found on the cell surface membrane or inside the cell. This receptor must have a complementary shape to the shape of the signaling molecule. Do not say the shapes are the same, similar or identical. You must use the word complementary. 2. Describe the appearance of the endothelial cells of a capillary. 
The cells that make up the wall of capillary are squamous epithelial cells. They are thin or squamous. It has a smooth surface to reduce the friction to blood flow. Due to its thinness, the region of the cell where you find the nucleus would be wider or bulged. And lastly, to have a more efficient material exchange, there are pores of fenestration on the cell. Sometimes, there are pores or gaps between the cells. Next, we have a table showing the first 10 amino acids in the primary structure of this compound. The DNA triplets in the non-transcript strain that codes for it are shown here as well. The non-transcript strain is the DNA strain that is complementary and opposite of the DNA strain which is used for transcription. Then, we have a table showing all the DNA triplets and the amino acids they code for. B asks you to suggest the effect of some mutations. The first one is the substitution of base T with base A in the middle of the triplet at position 5. According to the table, if we change TTC to TAC, the amino acid changes from phenylalanine to tyrosine at position 5. 2. The deletion of base T in the triplet at position 2. If you delete one base, the sequence will change from that point onwards. You can give any example to get a second mark. There is also a possibility that somewhere after these 10 amino acids, a stop triplet would be introduced early, resulting in a short-term polypeptide. For this question, you can also get full marks by listing the new sequence coded by the DNA after the mutation occurs. The third one is the insertion of base G between base G and T in the triplet at position 3. This mutation will cause the fourth triplet to become a stop triplet. So, the peptide is only 3 amino acids in length. However, the third amino acid is still glycine. C wants you to explain why the genetic code is described as universal. This is because the genetic code is the same or similar in all organisms. D. Use table 5.2 to explain why some mutations have no effect on the primary structure of a protein. The table shows you that it is common to have more than one triplet or codons to code for the same amino acid. For example, GGT, GGA, GGC, GGG codes for glycine. You can use any other example to get this mark. This is known as the degenerate feature of the genetic code. This is also the reason why there are 64 possible codons for only 20 different amino acids. In this question, we have a diagram showing the action of carbonic anhydrase in a red blood cell. A. State why there are transport proteins in the membranes of red blood cells to allow the movement of hydrogen carbonate ions and chloride ions. In this question, you need to talk about the properties of the phospholipid bilayer. Ions cannot pass through the phospholipid bilayer due to its hydrophobic core. Those transport proteins provide a hydrophilic pathway for ions to move through. This kind of movement is called the facilitated diffusion. B wants you to explain why the movement of chloride ions out of the red blood cell is necessary when red blood cells flow through capillaries in the lungs. This is to balance the charge due to the movement of bicarbonate ions. The chloride shift maintains electrical neutrality inside the cytoplasm so that the buildup of negative charge in the cytoplasm would not occur. C. State why carbon dioxide molecules diffuse from the red blood cells into the plasma. The movement is due to the concentration gradient. Carbon dioxide enters the alveolus and then excreted from the lungs. This is a part of the gas exchange at the alveolar surface. D. State the name of the compound indicated by X. X combines with oxygen and releases protons. It is hemoglobinic acid. That's all for today. If you think my videos are useful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.